Hi, this is Ibadi and X, and welcome to another episode of The Candid Frame. I was visiting my mom recently in my old neighborhood, and as usual, when I park my car, I see this fellow across the street. His name is Mr. Cush, and uh, he's been a staple of the neighborhood for as long as I can remember. And every time I see my mom, he's always in front of his storefront where he, use, where he sells a bunch of used items, uh, sitting in his chair. And this particular morning, I saw the light being reflected off this mirror onto his face. And as I gazed at him across the street, I knew that I wanted to make, make his photograph. So I grabbed my camera and I went and I made this image. And as you can see here, I wanted to include the, the storefront, the sign, and everything in the image. And there's a lot of stuff here, especially with respect to color. So one of the things I knew I wanted to do is I wanted to, I envisioned this photograph as a, as a black and white image um, built around what I saw in terms of the quality of the light. One of the challenges was, though, I was using a 24 to 105 millimeter lens and physically I was I got as back as far as I could, but unfortunately there was uh, some stuff that was right on the sidewalk that pre prohibited me from getting any further back. So I had to shoot at an angle where the curvature of the lens was going to be pronounced. You can really see it towards the uh, the edges of the frame up here. Uh, the 24 to 105 is the, is a is a great lens, but there is some curvature some barrel distortion along the edges of the frame, particularly when you get to the uh, to the wider angle end. So I knew I needed to contend with that. Um, normally, I would have tried to get a little more space around the sign because whenever you start correcting for this distortion, you start losing some 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 material along the edges of your frame. But physically, this was about as far back as I could get. But um, given that that's the case, I still wanted to show you what I ended up doing in order to improve this image. Now, I've made all the corrections here that I normally would do in terms of my color contrast. And just to show you the before and after, this is kind of what I started with. And then after all my corrections with exposure, uh, highlights, shadows, etc., I got to uh, this this version of the image, which, which I'm pleased with. But I'm still having to contend with that distortion. So what I do is I'll go down here to lens correction. And here you'll see one of the first options, which is profile. And when you enable profile corrections, what Lightroom does, it actually goes into a database where it's actually taken tests from each individual lens for barrel distortion and pin cushioning and applies the right amount of correction for it. So in this case, when I click on here, it automatically detects that it was a 24, 24 to 105 millimeter lens and it immediately makes that correction. So here's the, here's the before. And now here's the after. So with, when, within one click, it's made the correction. And this database contains a, a lot of different brands of lenses. They have Canon, uh, Nikon, Pentax, uh, Sigma, uh, Tamron. So practically every, every lens that you can imagine is in here. I know there's a database out there for lenses that aren't listed here that people have created their own customized profile corrections that you can actually import into uh, into Lightroom. So if you're an Olympus user, for example, uh, I know that there's a database out there of lens profiles for the Olympus system that you can bring in there. Or if you have some legacy lenses that you like to use uh, that aren't listed here, you can actually import those as well. So one of, the, uh, one of the other things I wanted to do is there is a little bit of some vertical and horizontal distortion in the image. Not much, but still it's, it's, it's something that bugs me. So what I can do is I can go here to the manual and then I can just move the slider slightly to start making corrections for both the vertical and the horizontal. So I'm just going to adjust that there. Actually, that seems pretty good, but in terms of the horizontal, I had it set for zero, and I went to about plus four here, and that looks to be about right. So that's really the only thing that I needed to correct here uh, in order for it to, to look as good as I as I could. So that's that's done there. I could apply a vignette, but I think I'll do that after the after the fact, because right now I just wanted to have a good as good a raw image as I could possibly have. Now, as I mentioned before, I want to see this image as a black and white. Now I can go into the black and white conversion. One of my favorite tools to use is actually the NIC Silver Effects Pro software. So I'm going to launch that here. And way, the way you can get to it is by going to Photo, Edit In, Filters, 
and I'll go here to Silver Effects Pro 2. Uh, I really like this software. It's pretty much become my default in terms of editing my images for black and white. Not only because it has all these you know, wonderful presets, but it allows me to customize the look uh, in, in, in an incredible way. And I may spend a little more time uh, doing this in a later episode. I'm not going to spend too much time here. I just wanted you to, to sort of see like the whole progress from seeing the image as the color image and then eventually seeing it as a as a black and white. Uh, my system's a little slow here, so forgive that. I'll be buying a new system soon, which I'll be very grateful for. But uh, now we want to update now. I'll have to do that later. And... Okay, so here I am in Silver FX Pro 2. Now normally I would make a lot of customizations here, but I actually know that I like this high structure in one of the presets here. So I'm gonna click that. And that definitely gives me a starting point. At that point, I can start tweaking uh, tweaking the image a little bit. I know I tend to skew my images over to, a little, to the dark side, so I'm gonna reduce the brightness just to just a bit overall here and unfortunately my system is a little slow so there's gonna be some delay in here and then I actually can go into the midtones and the highlights and make you know make the shadows darker make the midtones just a little brighter I think the, I'll leave the highlights as they are I can actually uh, control contrast in this case I want to amplify the whites just a little bit and I'll uh, leave the blacks where they are. With a soft contrast, you can sort of play around between the relationship between the dark tones and the uh, and the highlight tones. I don't like it going to the screen towards the bright, so I'm going to go the opposite end to about there. I really like what the preset did, so for the most part, I'm able to to just sort of leave that there. And and that's all I'm going to do for right now. If I was really going to work on the image extensively, I might go into some of the other adjustments. But for now. This will do. So here's the final result. Here's the black and white conversion on the left, and here's the original color on the, on the right. Though there's some interesting colors here, I find that th these elements here, like this can here with the yellow and the red, uh, these red cables and stuff like that, are really distracting, including this sort of green color here. I want him to be sort of the focal point of the image, and I think that the black and white conversion really allows me to do that. But most importantly, as I showed you earlier, all that distortion that I had that's native to the lens has been corrected for, and it looks really, really good to my eye, and I'm really pleased with the final result. So this is kind of like a, a two-four for this episode, one in terms of lens correction and the other way. I, I uh, convert over to black and white. So I hope this was helpful. If you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe. Tell your friends about it. And uh, if you have a blog or on your social network, be it Google Plus or uh, Facebook, please spread the word about these tutorials. And if you haven't already, please listen to The Candid Frame. We have uh, some great interviews there with some wonderful photographers, and you can find that and much more at thecandidframe.com.